Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Tech News product review. A very long-awaited update for EcoFlow's best-selling power station, the Delta 1300, which launched all the way back in 2019, has finally arrived. It seems to mitigate virtually all the shortcomings of the original. It now has app support, which includes a way to adjust the AC charge rate. It accepts up to 500 watts of solar panels, offers a lot more USB charging options, has a very simple to use modular battery expansion system, and probably most importantly, they moved to using safer, longer life lithium iron phosphate batteries. EcoFlow's slogan for this product is, it's not just a battery. But is it any good? Let's find out. Inside the Delta II is a 1,024 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery rated 3,000 cycles to 80% capacity, or one full charge and discharge cycle every day for eight years. As for size and weight, this thing is small and lightweight. I'm gonna go ahead and put those specifications here at the bottom of the screen, and here's what it weighed on my scale. The case is all ABS plastic all the way around in the typical EcoFlow Delta series design with the typical EcoFlow color screen. The screen, of course, shows input output watts, time to charge and discharge, Battery percentage has a little spinny icon whenever something's going on. Gives you a couple different error messages. It's got Wi-Fi, so you can actually use the EcoFlow app. As for the inverter, this sports a whopping 1800 watt pure sign inverter with six, count them, AC outlets. Note that only two of these though are three prong outlets. Do note that this EcoFlow product does support X-Boost, which is EcoFlow's proprietary boosting technology that will let you run some appliances up to 2200 watts. It does this by dropping the voltage, which is only safe for certain appliances. As for ways to charge, just like the majority of all EcoFlow products, it does have a charger built in and it will charge it up to 1200 watts. Now at 1200 watts, they claim zero to 80% charge in only 50 minutes. But if you wanna charge this fully from zero to 100, it takes about an hour and a half. The Delta also supports up to 500 watts of solar from 11 to 60 volts through its MPPT controller, and that'll get you charged up to full in about three hours, which is really darn fast for one of these smaller generators. And finally, they do include a cable that will let you charge from 12 volt vehicle. It does take about 12 to 15 hours, and that does take me to 12 volt outputs. This has three 12 volt outputs on them, all regulated at 12.6 volts, you have a single 12 volt cigarette lighter socket that you would use for a refrigerator or whatever. And then you have a pair of 5521 outputs. So the cigarette lighter is rated at 10 amps where the 5521 outputs are rated at only three amps. However, we all know that they can handle at least five amps. Now that takes us back to the front for the USB outputs. The Delta II does offer a pair of standard dinosaur USB-A ports, a pair of USB-A quick charge ports, and a pair of 100 watt power delivery outputs. Note there are no bi-directional USB ports. These are all output only, so you could not charge the Delta II through USB. Now, even though the Delta II is small, it also does have a UPS feature or uninterruptible power supply, which we'll test here in a bit. This product does support the EcoFlow app, which does require internet service in order to sign up for a cloud account. Of course, the Delta II's most talked about feature is its ability to expand its battery capacity by either one or two kilowatt hours, depending on which EcoFlow battery you add on. I have right here the EcoFlow Delta II add-on battery, which is another kilowatt. So this is the standard offering, but you can also get the EcoFlow Delta Max battery, which is two kilowatt hours. And as for warranty, I'm seeing a growing trend in the industry where they're offering longer and longer warranties on this product. This has a whopping five year warranty, which is great for something that's so inexpensive. And of course I took the Delta II into my secret laboratory here where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including of course, a double fisted. <laughs> battery capacity test.
for the results of the DC battery capacity test, it did score 800 watt hours out of 1024, or 78%. As for the AC battery capacity test, it was a little bit better at 830 watt hours out of 1024, or 81%. Now, while these numbers are around industry average, they're quite low when compared to other EcoFlow products. They don't specify what brand cells they're using, but I was so surprised by these results, I ran the test twice just to make sure. Pure sine wave check under load. Passes at 118 volts, 60 hertz with a perfect sine wave, and this is under a 500 watt load. Inverter capacity test. This is where we test to see how much can we pull from the inverter on this product. Now the Delta II does have an 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter, but they do have a feature called X-Boost, which allows you to technically run appliances over 1800 watts, although it never pulls more than 1800 watts from the inverter. What it does is it brings the voltage of the appliance down to allow you to run more amps. So we're gonna keep X-Boost off during this test and see how much power can we pull from the raw inverter. And of course, that means only one thing. Dun, dun, dun. The solar D generator. So let's go ahead and fire it up. Hey. Okay, watching this number right here, it says 1330. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So right at 2400 watts is when it dies. 2400 watts is a very good result from this inverter. You have to remember this is a tiny little battery with a really big inverter right at 1800 watts. So the fact that we can get it up to 2,400 watts manually, now that's is not a surge number. This is kind of give you an idea of how many watts this can pull under a short period of load, like five, 10 seconds. Say you have a AC compressor or something like that kick on. This can handle up to 2,400 watts for a few seconds, and that's what we need to know. This next test is called the five minute sustained cooling test, or what I call the heat soak test, where we run the inverter at its maximum capacity for five minutes See if it starts doing anything weird. Does it start smoking or drinking or doing drugs or calling its mother names or behaving badly, smelling funny? We want to check and make sure that the cooling system in these things works properly. Here we have it running at 1830 watts. Let's see if it'll take it for five minutes. And it looks like it's gonna pass with flying colors. And we're experiencing no funny smells, no smoke, no overheating. In fact, the air coming out is barely warm. Now, just like every other EcoFlow product, there is a downside to this fantastic cooling, and you can hear it in the background. These fans are cranking. It sounds like a hair dryer. Let's find out just how loud they are. 65 decibels, that's pretty darn loud. Max charge rate test. Now we're gonna go ahead and find out just how much power can you pump in via AC or DC. So right now I have this plugged into AC wall power and it does have a 1200 watt AC wall charger built in. So you can plug this into the wall or a generator or any kind of other AC wall power as long as it's 110, 120 volts. And it will actually charge at a maximum of 1200 watts. Now I can tell you already what the decibel level of this fan is. It's exactly the same as it was before because it's pretty darn loud. So this thing is loud whether or not it's charging or discharging. That's just something you have to get over. It's a small product with little tiny high speed fans. It does sound like a hair dryer. Now what about charging from DC sources such as a cigarette lighter in your car or solar? So the Delta II does support from 11 to 60 volts DC and that's up to 15 amps. So you can see right here, I'm actually pulling 15 amps and this is 12.6 volts and it is charging at 166 watts. Now, interestingly enough, in the app, I have the maximum limit set to eight amps when charging from 12 volts. It's pulling 15. Now, this is probably going to be addressed in a firmware update because if you try to pull 15 amps from some cars, you're going to blow fuses. Because 166 watts is quite a lot to pull from a cigarette lighter. It should be a maximum of 128 watts 
or 10 amps. So no doubt this is something they're going to address. EcoFlow is very good at putting firmware updates out to fix little bugs like this, so don't be concerned. This product is not yet out on the market, so I'm sure they're gonna watch this video, see the result of this, and fix the bug right away. So what about solar range? So anywhere from 18 to 60 volts, you're gonna get 500 watts of solar, and it's gonna adjust the amps depending on how many volts you got. So I'm pushing 60 volts, eight and a half amps, which is the maximum this is gonna support, and it is hard limited to 500 watts of solar. And the input on this is hard limited to 500 watts, no matter what combination of volts or amps you put in. So yes, you can over panel this as long as you don't exceed the 60 volts. If you wanna put more panels on this, the input does support up to 15 amps. Watch what happens if I exceed 60 volts. Watch the wattage coming in. Right at 63 volts, last time I tested it was 62. So 62, 63 volts, you lose your input. It drops completely to zero. So just remember, you do have a hard limit of 60 volts on the solar input. That means whatever combination of panels you decide to use, they don't have to be EcoFlow panels. If you want solar panels that are not portable and you want something that's gonna last a long time, Go to hubotech.tv slash Amazon under solar kits. And I have a plethora of all kinds of different kind of panels you can use. You can virtually use just about anything on that page with this product. Now, what about simultaneous charging? Can you charge from both AC and DC sources at the same time? You can see I'm running about 60 volts around eight amps. I'm at the hard limit of 500 watts. Let's go ahead and plug the AC wall power in and see what happens. So you can see right there the wattage disappeared from 500 watts and it is now at 1200 and here come the high speed fans well look at what we have here we have 60 volts it's not pulling any amps it's only charging from ac wall power it is not charging from solar at the same time so does the delta 2 support simultaneous charging from both ac and dc sources no it does not when you plug in ac power it just takes over, completely ignores the solar. Now what about UPS or uninterruptible power supply or pass-through charging? The Delta II does have a rudimentary UPS system with a switching relay inside making it an offline UPS. Now I do have an oscilloscope here. We're gonna watch and see what happens to the sine wave. And of course we have the handy dandy heater with a red light on it, which will let you actually see how fast it switches. So first, let's watch the light. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the power. Currently, it is connected to AC wall power, so it is pulling power in from the grid. Three, two, one. Whoa, that is a really deep turn off and back on again. Let's go ahead and turn the power back on and see if it blinks. Yep, it actually blinks when you turn the power back on. This is not really a good sign. Now, next, let's go ahead and watch the sine wave. You can see it says 120 volts, 60 hertz. This is actually power coming in from the wall. Watch the sine wave. Three, two, one. Whoa! So this is not a really good sign. First, you can see the light clearly turn off and back on, and then you can see the sine wave just disappear and come back. So the switch in this, is pretty darn slow. So because this light goes completely out and comes back on and the sine wave completely goes flat and then comes back, I would just go from my own experience and say, this is gonna be too slow for a personal computer. Now, there was a lot of bitching and complaining in my last video that I did not hook a computer up to the Jackery that I was testing and show that it was switching fast enough to keep a computer on. The problem is I just don't have computers laying around my house. I know I'm Hobotech, but I lived in a van for four years. I threw all my old computers away. Uh, I moved into this new place and I've only bought what I needed. So I don't have computers laying around, but I completely forgot that I brought with me this laptop, which is like 18 years old. And it will suffice because what I can do is plug this into the inverter and I took the battery out. The battery's dead anyway, but as you can see, it has no battery in the bottom. This thing's a monster, it's heavy. No battery in here, okay? So I got this plugged into the inverter, and I'm gonna show you guys an actual test with an actual computer. All right, here you have it. I have the laptop turned on, plugged into the Delta II's inverter, and the wall power's on, so it's currently charging. You hear the loud ass fans in it, and it is powering my laptop. What happens when I turn the wall power off is, let's just pretend that we're having a lightning storm, 
and there's going to be a blackout for a few seconds, what's going to happen to this laptop? Let's pretend I'm doing some work on the laptop and go ahead and turn the power off. Three, two, one. It switches too slow to keep the laptop on. So this is proof that the Delta II cannot run a computer in UPS mode. If the power goes out, you're gonna lose your work. So keep that in mind. Now what about 12 volt outputs? The Delta II does have a single 10 amp cigarette lighter socket in the back along with a pair of 5521 ports good for three amps. They all share, and they all share the same circuitry. It is regulated at 12.6 volts, although it is reading 12.7 volts on my tester. Let's see if we can pull the full 10 amps. Now we can pull the full 10 amps, but it does drop the voltage below 11 volts down to 10.8. So that might be a little bit of an issue for some of you running high amp appliances. And for the voltage to drop, it's pretty typical. It's called voltage sag. When you apply a load to an electronic circuit, the voltage is gonna drop. Now they decided to regulate this at 12.6, unlike everybody else who does 13.4, 13.6, 13.8. And the problem is when you pull the full 10 amps from the socket, it drops that voltage all the way down to 10.8 volts, which in some cases, certain refrigerators, things like that, may not run that well on the Delta II if you have a full load in that port. Now most refrigerators only pull 60 watts, so that's not gonna be a big deal. But if you have other things plugged in, if you are using those 5521 ports and the cigarette lighter at the same time, just be aware that if you pull the full 10 amps, it's gonna drop the voltage down to 10.8. Now what about USB outputs? The Delta II has a pair of standard USB-A dinosaur ports, a pair of USB-A quick charge ports, good for 18 watts each, and a pair of 100 watt power delivery ports. Now sometimes they claim that you can output 100 watts on both at the same time and it ends up actually being in real life 60. But in this case, I do have two 5 amp cables hooked up to the USB ports to a pair of power bends which can each charge at 100 watt USB power delivery and we're outputting 194 watts. So it is true that the Delta II has a pair of 100 watt power delivery ports that can both output 100 watts simultaneously. Now obviously one of the best selling points to the new Delta II is the fact that you can double the battery capacity by adding on one of the Delta II smart batteries. Now I got one here and there's a little cable that stays in the top. It's a nice little compartment that you can put the cable in. It's just a nice simple cable. It's got a couple of connectors in there. You obviously don't want to get those dirty or corroded. There's a little port on the side that you plug it in and it only goes in one way. And then the other port goes in the side of the Delta II. Same exact thing. You wanna make sure these are both turned off when you do this. So as soon as I plug them both in, they recognize each other. Now this does not have anything else on it. What I mean is that this extra battery has no other features than just being a battery. That's all it does. In fact, there's no way to charge this without the Delta II. So don't think you can just buy this battery, plug it into the wall and charge it. You can't, it has to be charged by the Delta II. There's nothing up front. There's no USB ports, no cigarette lighters, no nothing, just a single button and a display. The only input and output is the actual battery cable input and output. Nothing on the back, nothing on the side. The only thing on the top is, is the compartment. So. They really, really wanted to keep the price down on this, obviously, by not offering any features whatsoever on these extra batteries. And I know that's gonna take me to my next question. Does the Delta II or the Delta II Smart Battery support the EcoFlow Wave air conditioner? Because this does have a direct battery input and output on it, and this cable with this interface is exactly the same as it is on the EcoFlow air conditioner. Let's go into the garage and find out. So does the Delta II support the EcoFlow Wave air conditioner? Absolutely yes. Look at that. It actually says it has two hours left of runtime and we're down to 55 degrees. It says here we're running 268 watts. Direct DC to DC. So it doesn't get any better than this. This might be the best solution. It is certainly the cheapest solution for running the EcoFlow Wave air conditioner than we've seen to date. So yes, 100% support 
for the EcoFlow Wave. Last but not least, the musician's favorite amp interference test. This is where we determine how noisy is the inverter in the Delta II. We know it's a good inverter, but is it noisy? Does it make noise through amplifiers as a hum or a buzz? So I've not tried this test yet with this product. I do have the amp hooked up with all the knobs turned up to maximum, nothing plugged into it. As soon as I turn the AC inverter on, we're gonna hear a pop and then we'll see, do we have a buzz or is it clean? Place your bets. Ah, uh, but it's not really that surprising. So yes, unfortunately it does fail this test. It does make an annoying buzz, but you can't expect a cheap product like this to do everything. So definitely too noisy for a PA system or ham radio operation. If you need to do something like that, you're probably gonna wanna look elsewhere. So what do I think about our new buddy, the Delta II? Well, First, it's just too darn loud. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. Next place. Now this is a small and relatively inexpensive power station. It's on the lower end of what EcoFlow offers. So failing the amp interference test is actually expected. Now what I didn't expect was EcoFlow cheaping out on the UPS relay. They do claim a 30 millisecond switching time, which simply isn't fast enough for most computers. Their other higher end products switch fast enough to support a PC. Heck, Blue Eddy's cheapest offering on the market also has a UPS relay, and that switches fast enough for a computer. I know because I own three of them and I use it on my computer. I'm not sure why EcoFlow can't do it with a thousand dollar budget. Now that takes me to the external battery. Now, the lack of thought that went into the external battery is a bit baffling because I expected they would have learned from the Delta Pro that customers want things like USB ports, 12 volt connections, or at least a way to charge it with solar or an external charger of some kind. And I understand this is a budget product and they have to cut corners, but there isn't much incentive for a customer to buy an add-on battery that isn't actually that much more expensive than the product itself, and it has no additional features whatsoever. It actually makes sense to just go ahead and buy two of these if you really need the capacity, than to buy one of these with the add-on battery. So I'm not really sure what they were thinking marketing-wise with this. They should have thrown some USB ports on it and made it chargeable by solar or chargeable by any means besides the Delta II. That's one of the sticklers with this battery. It's completely useless without this product. So you can't charge it, you can't discharge it. Now you can technically run the EcoFlow Wave air conditioner out of the port on this. But how are you gonna charge it back up? You have to plug it into the Delta II and either charge it with the solar on the Delta II or charge it with AC power from the Delta II or 12 volt, I guess, if you wanna wait an eternity. I know if I was gonna buy the Delta II and I needed extra capacity, I'd either go for the Delta Max battery or just buy a second one of these and I'd have two of them. Now, the only real bug I found and realized this is an early release version. This product is not out yet. You can't even get your hands on one for another month or so. I'm not sure when they're actually going to hit the shelves, so to speak. And the only actual bug I found after a thorough testing of this product, which shows how good their quality control really is, is that it allows a user to charge it from 12 volts at 15 amps, and that would be blowing fuses all day long in most vehicles. Now, this is something they can obviously fix very quickly and very easily in firmware, so don't be concerned about that at all. EcoFlow's great at firmware updates. I'm sure they'll have this resolved before you can even touch yours. So all my complaining pants is make it sound like this is not a product to buy. However, if you set aside the cost-cutting aspect, they really needed to get this down under a thousand bucks or no one was gonna buy it. So you kinda have to understand they're gonna cut some corners. Brushing that aside, this is one heck of a bang for your buck product. I would have no problem spending my own money on one of these. I mean, you get a fantastic 1800 watt pure sign inverter with an 830 watt usable LFP battery, great USB support, 500 watt MPPT solar controller, 1200 watts of AC fast charging, app support, the ability to double your battery capacity at will, all that for under a grand. And note, if this battery is too small for you, you can use the Delta Max battery to get an extra two kilowatts of power. Now, I don't have a Delta Max battery. That was one product I didn't actually test because I had to choose between a Delta Pro or that. 
they were being released at the same time. I chose the Delta Pro. I don't have the max battery, so I don't know how it performs, but I'm gonna have to guess that if it's using the same battery that's in this, it's probably gonna get around the same 80% usable capacity. Product price. The Delta II launches at the time this video is published. So by the time you're done watching this video, you should be able to buy one of these Delta IIs. Now the launch price of $9.99 is fantastic in of itself. EcoFlow was kind enough to offer Hobotech viewers one of the best discounts on this product you can find online. And in order to get this special deal with this special price, you're gonna need to use the link and discount code in the description of this video. Now, what about competition? There's really not a lot out there in the 1000 watt hour LFP range that can compete with this product at this price point. The Jackery 1000 Pro launched earlier this month. That thing was basically a huge flop thanks to this product's early announcement. I think just about everyone decided to wait for the Delta II and skip out on the Jackery 1000 Pro. Now, Blue Eddy doesn't even have a competing product in the 1000 watt hour range. That's like a big gap of their market that they're missing. So it seems like EcoFlow is basically gonna own this portion of the market for quite some time. Now, what about recommended solar for the Delta II? Now, since this is definitely in the meat and potatoes portion of the mid-range portable power station segment, it makes sense to also get portable folding solar panels. I recommend getting one of the Delta II solar generator bundles. There is one with a 220 watt panel and one with a 400 watt panel. Either one's going to recharge this under good sun conditions in one solar day, but if you're in a hurry, get the 400 watt one. If you're looking for more permanent panels for a more permanent solution, I have a lot of compatible panels available available on hobotech.tv slash Amazon, click on solar kits. And if you're interested in the Delta II, the link and the code is in the description for that fantastic deal. I'm also gonna put a link right here at the bottom of the screen along with a QR code that you can scan on any mobile device. It'll shoot you right on over to EcoFlow's page where you can check out the new Delta II. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. If your search for a soldier is a pain in the neck, go to YouTube and watch Hope Cause he's a test in this and he's a probing that He's even been probing, probing his cat If you want to get all the soldier back on his old deck Yeah! RV Golf Guy Von Rob Brian Lieber John Stacey Soroka Dr. Steve Eisenhower